Last week, in that video there, we took you to the Tarantula Nebula and showed you its core, filled with some of the most massive stars in the universe. Unfortunately, because of time, we actually left part of the story out. But today, we want to take you back to the Tarantula and tell you the amazing story of a runaway star. So I work on massive stars, and in fact I'm now part of a collaboration that we're now looking at a thousand of the brightest stars in the Tarantula. And we've basically been observing them with the VLT telescope in Chile, and we've been trying to work out how old they are and how big they are, and, and trying to kind of piece together the dynamics of this region. You know, for example, there's one star which is kind of very peripheral in, in the Tarantula Nebula. And, it, and it's kind of, well, why, how did it get there? And it turns out we think it's actually, it was born in a central cluster and was kicked out at birth, basically, by the, by the big boys, big, even bigger boys in the club. They kicked it out and it's now off one side. So this is a wide field view with a combination of telescopes in Chile and the Hubble telescope of the Tarantula Nebula, which kind of gives you a feel for why it's got its name. So this is the main region of the Tarantula. The central cluster is over here. And the one that we think was kicked out from our survey of stars all around this region was this little blue thing here. So this one is like an 80 solar mass star. It's a real monster. But we think it was kicked out of this region about 2 million years ago when this cluster was forming. And we think it's now gone around about 300 light years in a couple of million years. And it's going to keep going that way, we think. And then probably glow supernova sometime in the next million years or so. I don't know whether to think that's kind of sweet or tragic that it got thrown out of the club. Well, it's what we call a runaway. And so you can either get two types of runaway star, ones that are kicked out from when the stars are forming. And basically we have maybe a binary system, a pair of stars, another star comes along and they kind of, kind of dance around each other for a while. But then the weediest one gets kicked out. The other way of getting a star moving at high velocity is if it's, a, it's a, again, it's, if it's born in a binary system with a companion, if the companion goes bang, supernova, it can get kind of a, a shock, a recoil from that explosion and then be shot off too later on. There's all these cool kinds of stars. I'd never even heard of runaway stars. That's yeah. another one to add to the list. Yeah, yeah. Is the sun one of these cool stars or are we that boring? No, it's pretty boring, but it's good for us. Most likely these things, because they are so big, and the radiation from them is so kind of crazy, they've kind of died before, you know, it could even get planets forming, even if planets were to form. But most likely, these, are, these big stars probably don't have planets. 